Hey guys, what's going on? It's Carl here, back with another episode, and this one I have been personally waiting on for the longest time. It is finally 2016 MacBook Pro Refresh. Oh my goodness, I'm getting a bit giddy here. I personally upgrade my MacBook Pro every four years. I've naturally done so for the last eight years. Generation three for me. This one, of course, has the fabled touchpad, and I know there's been a couple videos online of the non-touchpad variant, but I'm bringing what you want to see. We got to check this out, but let me tell you off the bat, this guy is pricey. $1,800 for the base model. I think only Apple can get away with pricing like that. So this one is actually the 13 inch. I'm going to be taking a look at the 15 inch in, of course, my next video. I'll leave that linked up here somewhere. So make sure you guys check that out, but oh man. As we take the plastic wrapping off quickly on the box, it's got a 13.3 inch screen, 2560 by 1600 display. So same resolution, it is brighter this time around though. 2.9 gigahertz dual core i5 turbo boosted up to 3.3, eight gigs of RAM, which is soldered on, 256 of solid state, Intel Iris graphics 550, four Thunderbolt 3 ports, and those are USB-C variants, headphone jack, touch bar, touch ID. That is a lot of money for what you're getting. I hear all those people crying, everyone going nuts over on Twitter how this thing is so expensive. I have nothing more to say. Let's take a look what we got. Design-wise, you're not gonna find any faults here. The MacBook Pros are the best in class, and these things are built like A, a tank, and B, they're beautiful. A beautiful tank, if that can make sense. Can the build quality justify the price? Personally, I don't think so, but if you wanna run this operating system, if you want the latest and greatest, you gotta pay for it, and pay for it heavily. So now that I've got everything booted up and running for the past little bit, I'll give you guys my initial thoughts and impressions. If you're looking to get the base model without the touchpad, the OLED strip, I would almost recommend getting last year's model. It has similar specs in terms of actual graphics processing, slightly better, but overall you're not really seeing too much of a difference. Last year's models also will be way cheaper. Grab a refurbished one online, I think that's the way to go. If you've got a bit more money to spend, you are suckered into getting the touch bar because you want to have the latest and greatest. Someone like myself, I've already found a couple quick uses for it that have been really efficient. Surfing the net, using iMessage, glorified emoji bar, even quick little edit in Final Cut, and I'm really excited to see if other developers hop onto the touch bar and see what they can do to make shortcuts way more efficient. You can see, I'm trying to sell this guy. I'm trying to justify spending $1,800. Another reason not to grab the base 13 inch without the touch pad is it only has two Thunderbolt ports or two USB-Cs. This one thankfully has four, just like the 15 inch topic of, and on the topic of ports, I know this is the biggest issue. I just don't think this is tuned to pros having that option to use these guys, SD cards, HDMI. I now need to be living the dongle life, which who wants to do that? We maybe have to carry around one, two or three extra cables, depending on the accessories that you use. And personally myself creating YouTube videos, I'm gonna miss this guy, the SD card slot. Rest in peace. I've just recently ordered an all-in-one accessory. I will leave that link down below in the description, but I'm not looking forward to that because if I lose, misplace it, especially when I'm traveling, I'm stuck with ports that I might not be able to use, which is really unfortunate. I will give you guys the full lowdown on the port situation as I use this device and the 15 inch as my daily driver over the next little bit. But personally, I can already see this being an issue, but for most people out there, maybe they don't even use ports. I can see that as well. On a lighter note though, the MacBook Pros have the best in-class sounding speakers. They sound phenomenal for a laptop this size. The trackpad has gotten bigger and I absolutely love that. It's perfect for using gestures and getting to the keyboard. Butterfly switches, I still personally prefer the older ones found on my older gen MacBook Pro, and I'm not too sure how I feel about that. In terms of the size, being a pro computer, I rather have more processing power, considering it does have an older chip. It's almost a year and a half old now. It is Skylake, so it is more energy efficient, but in terms of raw computing power, once again, I think we're shifting away from the pro 
quote name. Anyways, that anyways that will wrap up my very first look and unboxing and initial impressions of the brand new 2016 MacBook Pro with Touch Bar. Remember to check out the 15 inch model, which I will be unboxing right after this guy. I will keep you guys posted on my overall thoughts, so make sure you sub to the channel for the full review. I will catch the rest of you, of course, in one of my next episodes or in one of my vlogs. Peace.